Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Hello viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Kurana with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India's economic growth story is no more a secret. It has not just emerged resilient in the grim COVID times, but is projected to grow fastest among the major economies of the world. Recently, the IMF Managing Director's statement that India is a bright spot in dark horizon has substantiated Delhi's economic decisions and has proven as a testimony to India's growing economic strength. A recession looms and is expected to have a global impact, from major developed economies to those just emerging. The annual conference of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank featured many discussions about the state of the world economy. With the Russia-Ukraine crisis escalating to almost nuclear threats, oil prices spiking the world over, and general slowdown in consumption patterns, coupled with global high inflation, the mood was grim at this year's IMF meet, with fears of a recession looming large. However, amidst this gloom and doom, the IMF reserves special praise for India. India deserves to be called a bright spot on this otherwise darker horizon uh, because uh, it has uh, been a, a fast-growing economy even during these uh, difficult times, but most importantly, this growth is underpinned by structural reforms. India's path to a strong economic model to be emulated by the world has not been an easy one. Painstaking groundwork was implemented on a mission mode to make a large part of the population digitally compliant. The DBT, or Direct Benefit Transfer Scheme, which transfers government funds directly to beneficiaries without any interference from middlemen, also was a topic of praise by the IMF, calling it a logistical marvel. If I look at the case of India, um, it, it is actually quite impressive. In fact, uh, just because of the sheer size of the country, it's, it's a logistical marvel how uh, these programs that uh, seek to help uh, people who are at low income levels reach literally hundreds of millions of people. In contrast to this success story of Digital India, we look at the German finance minister's recent comments when asked to conduct a similar exercise in his country. Prominent Twitter users were aghast that Germany had difficulty matching bank accounts with beneficiaries and that a process like India's DBT could take almost 18 months. One sector, however, that remains a worry for India is the dollar to rupee exchange rate. With the rupee breaching 82 rupees to a dollar, Headlines across the Indian media landscape predict a doomsday scenario for the Indian rupee. However, if we dig a little deeper into the data behind the exchange rate fluctuation, we see that in 2022, the rupee depreciation has been a lot less than other Asian currencies, despite an increasing crude oil bill. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman reiterated this fact on her recent trip to Washington, D.C. Let's listen in. I think Indian rupee has performed much better than many other emerging market currencies. But I think the efforts are by the RBI more towards maintaining a certain, um, let's say, more towards seeing that there are too much, there are not too much of volatility. It is not too intervene in the market to fix the value of rupee. According to the World Economic Outlook published by the International Monetary Fund, India is projected to surpass Germany to become the fourth largest economy by financial year 2027. It also says that India would expand faster than Japan by financial year 2028. 
political stability and attractiveness of the Indian economy as an investment destination for foreign multinationals can continue to drive structural flows into the country via foreign direct investment. This will further strengthen the country's strong economic foundation. While the world was still rebuilding from the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftershocks, India took a massive leap on the economic front when it recently surpassed the United Kingdom in terms of nominal GDP. Observers say that a tripartite foundation consisting of a resolute political will to make difficult decisions for the greater good, swift implementation of fiscal objectives, and a development strategy based on science and technology has yielded rich dividends for the country. As countries brace for economic headwinds, the Indian growth story continues to march on. As the IMF put it, India remains a bright spot in a dark horizon. Moving on, Pakistan has been dubbed as one of the most dangerous nations by U.S. President Joe Biden. It is another rebuke of the Pakistani establishment that has failed in reigning in the world's most dreaded terrorist under the sun. Countries around the world are also concerned that Pakistan might misuse the large nuclear arsenal it has. They feel that Pakistan is slowly but certainly becoming the most dangerous place in the world. Pakistan is one of nine nuclear-armed nations in the world. It is estimated that Pakistan has between 100 and 120 nuclear warheads, which can be delivered by airborne and ground-based missiles. According to a briefing by the U.S.-based Arms Control Association in March of 2022, Pakistan is developing new delivery technologies and increasing its nuclear arsenal faster than any other country. Pakistan's nuclear use policy is unlike its nuclear-armed neighbors, India and China. Pakistan has not committed to a no-first-use policy. India and China have both made unambiguous pledges of never being the first country to resort to using nuclear weapons. Pakistan, on the other hand, is one of the few nations in the world who have even publicly stated that they would use any weapon in their arsenal to repulse any attack on them. This asymmetric nuclear posture by Pakistan is meant to keep the world anxious about Pakistan's intentions and with destabilizing forces swelling in its country, the safety of Pakistan's nuclear arsenal remains a global fear. U.S. President Joe Biden described Pakistan as one of the most dangerous nations in the world which holds nuclear weapons without any cohesion. President Biden's comments irked Islamabad, and it summoned the U.S. ambassador to Pakistan over President Biden's nuclear remarks. Pakistan's foreign minister, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, said he was surprised by the comments. As far as the question of the safety and security of Pakistan's nuclear assets are concerned, we meet all, each and every, international standard in accordance with the IAEA as far as the safety and security of our nuclear assets. Why is the West so concerned about the safety of nuclear arsenals in Pakistan? Are these concerns valid? As per Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, Following the 9-11 attacks by Al-Qaeda on New York and Washington, D.C., Islamabad began to fear that the U.S. might feel compelled to neutralize the Pakistani nuclear arsenal as a precautionary move, rather than have it fall into the hands of radical Islamic terrorists that operate freely in the country. These concerns led Pakistan to consider raising the size of its nuclear arsenal and to increase the number of weapon storage facilities. The world has valid concerns about the security of nuclear arsenals in light of the Taliban reclaiming power in Afghanistan and expanding its influence in some areas of Pakistan. Actually, uh, when the U.S. said that the Pakistani um, you know, uh, nuclear program is not safe, uh, it's, it's a very relevant statement because as we know that Pakistan was involved uh, in, uh, and it accepted and confessed that uh, back in 2004 that uh, it uh, it was 
uh, involved in the black market of the nuclear uh, weapons and it was selling uh, nuclear secrets to The US-based academic institution, the Combating Terrorism Center, believes that most of Pakistan's nuclear weapons facilities are located in the north and west of the country and in the region around Islamabad and Rawalpindi. The fact that the majority of Pakistan's nuclear facilities are near or perhaps within Taliban and Al-Qaeda controlled regions is the main cause for concern. Despite these valid concerns, the United States, in an apparent rollback of President Biden's recent statement, due to political pressure, had to issue a statement that they were confident that Pakistan could secure its nukes. The truth, however, is closer to what President Biden had earlier said. There have also been a number of attacks on nuclear weapon sites. These have included an attack on the nuclear missile storage facility at Sargoda on November 1, 2007 an attack on Pakistan's nuclear air base at Kamra by a suicide bomber on December 1, 2007, and perhaps one of the deadliest attacks, the August 21, 2008 attack when Pakistani Taliban suicide bombers blew up several entry points to one of the armament complexes at the Wa Cantonment, considered to be one of Pakistan's main nuclear weapons assembly sites. There are serious concerns about Pakistan's potential transfer of nuclear weapons, weapons components, and nuclear know-how to terrorist groups. Pakistan's economic and political instability and lack of transparency in their international dealings further complicate and increase the risk of Pakistan's nuclear arsenal to global safety. The world must continue to keep a vigilant eye on Pakistan and keep them accountable globally. Moving on, the Diwali chair is here and the Indian economy is witnessing a sudden spike in customer spending. From vehicles to jewellery to clothes, every industry has registered a multifold appreciation in past few weeks. Observers say after two years Diwali hiatus, the Indian markets will continue to draw similar strength of customers this Diwali. India has been successfully able to navigate post-COVID economic shocks and the shifting global geopolitical structure. Consumers are out in full force taking advantage of festival season shopping. Stores and showrooms selling everything from jewelry to apparel to automobiles are reporting significant increases in sales in pre-Diwali festival days. The state of the automobile sector, which is essential to both macroeconomic growth and technological innovation, is a good indicator to measure India's economic health, and all signs point to an upward trend. In India, the automotive industry registered high growth rates during this festival season. According to the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association of India, the country's total vehicle retail sales rose 57% during the Navrati festival this year. The total vehicle retail sales between September 26th and October 5th of this year stood at 539,227 units, as compared to 342,459 units sold during Navrati last year. According to data, every category in the automobile sector showed extremely high growth with two-wheelers, three-wheelers, commercial vehicles, and passenger vehicles increasing by 52%, 115%, 48%, and 70% respectively. Leaders in the automobile sector are overjoyed that after a gap of three years, customers are back in their showrooms ready to purchase new sets of wheels. क्योंकि त्योहारी सीजन में लोग वेट करते हैं कि त्योहार आ रहा है घर में कोई नई चीज आनी चाहिए और हमें कुछ खरीदना है इस वजह से वो ज्यादा उत्सुक रहते हैं फेस्टिवल सीजन के दौरान गाड़ी खरीदने के लिए तो इस सीजन भी ये कोरोना के बाद है जो सीजन है चला है इसमें भी काफी लोगों को उत्सुक है गाड़ी खरीदने के लिए इंडियाज एपिटाइट फॉर प्रेशियस मेटल्स रिमेंस वोरेशियस गोल्ड एंड सिल्वर ट्रेडर्स अक्रॉस द नेशन सी हाई सेल्स ड्यूरिंग अक्टूबर एंड नवंबर the festive period usually sees higher sales for gold, silver and diamonds, as most Indians consider such purchases to be auspicious during this time of the year. This year hasn't been any different. 
लोग तो दिल से बाहर निकले हैं और ज्वेलरी का रेट्स भी गोल्ड का रेट अभी फिफ्टी थाउजेंड के रेंज में है तो लोगों के मन में पचास हज़ार का रेट एक लगभग बॉटम आ गया है कि इससे नीचे जाएगा तो इट्स बाइंग अपॉर्चुनिटी तो पचास के आसपास रहने से लोगों में उत्साह है If jewelry sales are up, then how can retail be behind? Indians are getting some much-needed retail therapy, and the holiday shopping numbers don't lie. According to industry projections, online and in-store retail sales are expected to surpass 27 billion USD this year, almost double from 2019 and about 25% higher than the previous year. The sales figures would include nearly 15.2 billion USD in offline sales. Compared to about 8.5 billion USD in 2019. Post COVID, it was shopping was not there at that time. So now it's more and more shopping is going on. And Diwali ka festival is so shopping is happening at that time. And specifically, jewelry investment purpose is also a very long run benefit. The post COVID recovery of any nation is usually measured with the discretionary spending habits of its population. The upwardly mobile, aspirational Indian is now spending on holidays and travel, and while on vacation, likes to shop as well. This shows an economy that remains resilient and consumption patterns that remain resilient. India remains open for business. Time now for Asia this week: the stories from across the continent. The government of Thailand has said that the country should see economic growth of 3.0% to 3.5% this year, driven by its key export and tourism sectors, a recovery that is best supported by gradual interest rate hikes. The economy is expected to grow 3.7% next year. The government expects a surge in tourist footfall next year. This year, Thailand witnessed tourist arrival of 8 to 10 million, which should double to 20 million in 2023, about half of the pre-pandemic figure. Southeast Asia's second largest economy is expected to return to its pre-pandemic economic activity levels late this year or early next year, the central bank predicts, lagging neighbors as tourism has only recently begun to recover. However, Thai currency baht was still moving in line with regional peers as the central bank would only manage excessive moves in the currency. The baht has been hovering at a 16-year low against the dollar and depreciated about 12% against the greenback so far this year. The Bank of Thailand will next review policy on November 30 when economists expect another hike. With tourism coming to a standstill during the pandemic, Japan's tourism industry was no exception. After a four-year hiatus, the Tourism Expo Japan 2022 was held in Tokyo with the motive of reviving tourism in the country. At the expo, major players from the tourism industry, along with Japanese authorities, set up booths and invited tourists to the country. Okinawa is a popular tourist destination. Tourists visit Okinawa to see the beautiful ocean and mountains and to taste unique food. Okinawa Prefecture is promoting Okinawa karate as a new way to attract tourists while they spread awareness regarding the origin of karate in Okinawa. In addition, Okinawa Prefecture is promoting workation combining work and vacation. Teleworking job style accelerates moving to the countryside to enjoy the rural atmosphere and work. It is the change of lifestyle that derives from the coronavirus pandemic. Of course, Okinawa has a resort city as well as a potential environment. In that context, it is a very different environment for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. It is also the same for people to enjoy the daily life. 仕事、えー、産業こういったものがうまく結びつけられるのがこの沖縄でのワーケーションスタイルだと思ってます北海道 is also popular among tourists from southeast Asia 
The local government, Noburi Beit Sutoya, is trying to attract more tourists by promoting Upupoi, a museum that allows visitors to experience its natural and Inu culture. The Inu culture have a long history of living in Hokkaido. Japan has significantly eased entry from foreign countries due to the reduction of coronavirus cases. Japan's coffee culture is very popular throughout the world. To promote the same, the SCAJ World Specialty Coffee Conference and Exhibition 2022 was held in Tokyo. It is Asia's largest coffee trade fair. The theme of the conference was come join the speciality coffee community. Different high quality coffee beans along with state of the art machines from around the world were displayed there. In Japanese history, many immigrants immigrated to Brazil, a coffee-producing country in the world. Japanese Brazilians have contributed to and created the deep coffee culture of Japan today. Myanmar's coffee beans have attracted the attention of the world's coffee industry for their recent advances in cultivation technology and high quality through careful work. Japan's coffee market has exponentially grown and is gaining attention from across the globe. Moving on, Diwali, the festival of lights, is around the corner. People can be seen in the markets shopping. Not just Diwali, but also Dhanteras preparation is witnessed in a full swing. Let's agree, food and festivities go hand in hand. Friends and family gather to bond over delicacies and making good memories. Observed by more than a billion people across faiths, this festival of lights brings prayers, feasts, fireworks and for some, a new year. Dhanteras or Dhantrayodashi is considered an auspicious day in the Hindu religion. On this day, people purchase gold, silver, clothes, gadgets as a sign of good fortune. Narak Chaturdashi is the second day, also known as Choti Diwali. According to Hindu tradition and mythology, it is believed that Lord Krishna fought the demon Narkasura and killed him. The main festive day is Diwali, when people perform Lakshmi Poojan. The main celebration of Diwali takes place on this day and Lord Rama returned to Ayodhya after killing Ravana. People welcome Goddess Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth who is believed to bless people with luck and prosperity. Now let's look at all the preparations and pre-festive rituals that Indian and people all over the world who celebrate Diwali follow. Pre-Diwali celebrations and arrangements are all about making memories and carrying forward the traditions that the elderly in the family have left behind. Earthen lamp artisans based in India's northwestern Jaipur city are having good sales ahead of the Hindu festival of lights. Diwali after two years of a dry spell of coronavirus. <laughs> उसके बाद में अभी सीज बढ़िया चल रहा है मार्केटिंग बढ़िया जा रही है यहां से जैसे हम थोक रेट में यहां से दे रहे तो ले जाने वाले बेच रहे बहुत बढ़िया बेच रहे मार्केट दिवाली का सीजन बहुत बढ़िया उठ रहा है यहां से क्लोथिंग इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट एवरी पर्सन शुड कीप इन देयर वार्डरोब ड्यूरिंग द फेस्टिव सीजन यू कैन अवेल मेनी डिस्काउंट्स एंड ऑफर्स ऑन क्लोथिंग फुटवेयर एंड मेनी अदर थिंग्स यू हैव टू शॉप ड्यूरिंग दिस फेस्टिव सीजन Diwali is the best time to shop for various things. Now, post-pandemic, when we see the market revive, we are a little bit of a surprise. We are feeling good that the time will be very good. Now, as it is the festival season, the festival season, the Diwali time, Karwa Chauth, the market is revived. The sale of our sale was 30-40%. Now, we are seeing a very good growth. This festive period is about exploring new things and trying out new styles and designs 
while connecting with your culture and uniting with the divine. Moreover, festivals like these are a celebration of good over evil. Diwali is all about gifting, celebrating and sharing. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.